Hello there and welcome back. This is going to be another Ansible video and uh, <clears throat> in the past couple of months I have been using very intensively Ansible to try out new ideas due to my uh, recent move to Budapest and uh, the second <laughs> new position. So um, this video I'm going to show you how I have created a small Ansible test environment where I can uh, bring up three machines. The first one is going to be the Ansible Master. The second one is the Ansible Agent A. And the third one is the Ansible Agent B. And uh, <clears throat> as you might have already guessed, the Ansible Master is going to be the node where I develop the Ansible playbooks and other, uh, let's say, role-based configurations. And uh, this is uh, a little bit tricky to get right, but uh, I'm going to guide you through how uh, you can achieve that. And uh, this uh, whole uh, Vagrant script is going to be available on my GitHub, so you can reproduce it if you want, if you feel like you want to, let's say, uh, experiment with this amazing platform. By the way, Ansible, I think, is the product of the company called Red Hat. So it has uh, many brilliant people working on it on a daily basis to make it more and more awesome. And uh, what I like about Ansible is the fact that it's an agent-less approach, which means that uh, all you need is an SSH or WinRAM access to the machine where you would like to run your Ansible script. And this is really a powerful concept because the platform itself is, is very flexible. So let's get to the point. My Vagrant file looks like this. So I'm using the base CentOS 7 box. I'm disabling the default uh, sync folder, but I'm syncing a special folder. And later in this video, I'm going to explain you why. So I have three provision scripts and these provision scripts, if they are on the outest or most outside layer, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, they are executed on each and every provisioned virtual machine. So I'm configuring the SSH, I'm adding the user and I am adding the keys. And uh, <clears throat> here I have the master's definition where the host name is the A master, the virtual machine's name is also the A master, and it's running on VirtualBox. So if I spin up my VirtualBox right now, you can see that the A master, the A agent A, and the A agent B are running. Uh, the master has two cores, one gig of RAM, the agent A and agent B both have uh, one gig of RAM and one core. So this is kind of a minimal setup, but but it's uh, enough. So I can try out ideas and the uh, machine I'm working on is not strained too much. So I get a pretty decent response time when I'm running anything. So <clears throat> my master has a public uh, network interface with this 190 IP bridged to my Wi-Fi. The agent A has also a public network interface with a 191 bridge to my Wi-Fi. And the agent B also has a public interface with 192 and it's also bound to the Wi-Fi bridge. And in the end, uh, I have a trigger before and uh, this uh, trigger is run when I'm uh, destroying the virtual machines with the Vagrant Destroy. And this is simply deleting the SSH keys. So let us take a look at the add keys that SSH or let's proceed in order. So configure SSH and it's here. So what I'm doing is updating my CentOS box to the latest possible version. So every package is as fresh as possible. And I'm installing the wget command. It will be handy later in time. So 
what I'm doing is reconfiguring my SSHD and I say that my authorized key files, the default which uh, says that every authorized key should come from the user profiles dot SSH authorized keys file is not valid anymore and I want to collect every authorized keys file in the etc SSH authorized keys file. <clears throat> After that I'm creating this authorized keys file and what I'm doing is copying the vagrant SSH authorized keys to this newly created file and then restarting the SSHD. This is necessary because uh, if you uh, omit this line then the minute you restart the SSHD daemon it uh, enables uh, the vagrant user will not be able to access with the vagrant SSH command the specific machine. So you need to make sure that this happens. After that, the add user SSH comes into picture, and this user is going to be the Ansible user. So as you can see here, the only argument that is passed to the script is Ansible, because what I did is uh, write this small bash script so that it is going to create the user and what you can see here is the output of the mk password command and uh, you can use that to specify the let's say hash of the password when you pass it to the user mod command so you do not have to write in the user creation the actual password and I think this is pretty neat. By the way, the default Ansible username is Ansible and the Ansible pass username's password is Ansible. So since we are on a CentOS uh, system, we need to make sure that uh, we add the user to the wheel group. So we are able to sudo. And uh, after that, what I do is to add the Ansible user to the sudoers file which means that from now on the Ansible user is able to perform password less sudo. This comes in handy when you are running playbooks or raw based configuration. And uh, I'm generating an RSA key for the Ansible user and uh, this is necessary because after that this RSA key, the public key is going to be imported in the agent. So the master can SSH in to the VMs without specifying password in case of the Ansible user. So that's one part of the setup. And this is uh, the part where the custom SMB share comes into picture because in order to get uh, the public keys and the private keys to the VMs, if you want, uh, I'm using uh, the the host machine. So I copy the keys to the folder and when the agent boots up it is going to add the keys and that's the trick. <laughs> and I'm reconfiguring the SSH configuration for the Ansible user to use the identity file which was just generated so the private key. And I'm changing the permissions according to standard and that's all about it. <clears throat> So here comes the add keys that sh. The add keys that sh all it does is it gets the master's public key to the authorized keys. So when it runs on the master, it's all right. When it runs on the agents, what it does, it allows the master to use the Ansible user to perform uh, passwordless uh, SSH towards them. And uh, Technically, this is it. So let me show you a demonstration. So Vagrant SSH. And when you are using Vagrant, you need to make sure that with the SSH, you specify this name in the define section. So Ansible Master. And if everything works correctly, it should give me back the prompt, but it's slow. So I got the prompt and now I'm going to change the user to Ansible and Ansible 
the password. And <clears throat> just a simple demonstration. So Ansible dash m is the module and the ping is the function that we are calling and I say all. And it succeeds. So we have the agent A, agent B and so on. And uh, this is uh, thanks to the master uh, prepared with the prepare master that sh. So what happens here? Here I install the Apple release which contains the Ansible package. After that I reconfigure the Ansible config so that the rose pass is uncommented. This is a official rose pass. The host key checking is also uncommented and the inventory is also uncommented. And from then I define the groups. <clears throat> so the previous command worked because I said that the all group should contain the master, the agent A and the agent B. And there we go. You can see it iterated over every agent and the master and they responded with success. So the key based SSH authentication is working. And I have also created a, an agent and the master part. So if I ping the agent, I should get two success as respond. If I ping the master, not mustard, but master. I get the response back. What you can also do uh, is the setup all or just the master. So this is going to gather the facts from the master. And as you can see, this is very detailed and uh, you can write playbooks or rows which utilize these information. So let's say you would like to run a playbook against every node which has more than four gigs of RAM for whatever reason. You could implement it with the help of these Ansible effects. And um, I think this is all I wanted to tell you in this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.